he's frightening. The calculation that he took at 13 to commit this is horrifying in that at 13 he was able to manipulate a situation in order to do something so heinous most people wouldn't even think about it, yet he manipulated a situation in order to carry it out. What is he now? He's older. His intelligence hasn't diminished. He will walk on the streets. He will be somebody's neighbor. He'll be out walking amongst everyone, and that's terrifying. I think viewers at the end of this are going to be absolutely stunned that somebody like this could potentially be back on the streets in a few years' time. I mean, one thing we know, that if this had happened five years later, he would never be getting out. Yeah. It only, he's only going to get out because he was a juvenile. But at 13, you know what happens mm -hmm. if you kill someone. And I, I often wonder, did he, did he choose to start acting on his murderous fantasies early at 13, knowing that he would have a chance of getting out in his mid-30s? I mean, the question for me, Paris, is this, is you're obviously very intelligent, very articulate. You, you pause before almost every answer you give me for thought. Your demeanor, the way you're sitting, is very measured. It's very, like, regulated, I guess. For all the charm that you obviously can turn on, that actually lurking inside you is a very dark side which makes you exceptionally dangerous. And that the only reason you're in such apparent control is because you don't want to do anything that might stop you getting out of here. What do you say to people that, that believe that about you? I say to the people who believe I'm just biding my time until I get out that they are fools. And I have nothing but scorn for them. Because, and I realize that as you say, my demeanor, I understand the way I present myself is disturbing to some people. I understand that I paint myself in dark hues. And I really don't care because I'm being honest. This is who I am. And I've reached a point in my life where I really don't care about what people think about me. That's one of the reasons why I agreed to the interview. But I know myself. I have you to... you care what I think about you? I would like you to appreciate the fact that I'm willing to be honest with you. This is affect changing. He's mm. getting it's angry. It's a one flash of anger we've yeah, seen. Yeah, he's getting angry. I would like you to How think. do I know you're being honest? Because I've basically just sat here and told you that if there's a spectrum of aberrancy, that I'm far from normal. I've agreed with you when you've described my actions as heinous and monstrous. I'm not protesting my innocence. I'm not downplaying the severity of what I've done. He does not like being confronted uh, no. on, on the reality. This is his narcissistic aspect of him. Like, people are stupid, and I scorn them, and I know how to control myself, and these people, they just, they, they don't understand. He's not going to the fact that he's been in prison since he was 13, so he is completely isolated from an outside world that he would have no idea of how to control himself in. I don't think that he would walk out of prison and immediately go on a rampage. But Paris describes what is his, what's inside him as his wolf. When he was younger, he called them his tentacles, that they would come up, you know, out of the darkness and pull his mind to these dark places. And now he calls it his wolf. And he tells me that he's figured out a way to keep that wolf on a chain buried in his mind somewhere and like this huge vault with all these locks on it and you know but my response is to him is always but the wolf is still there i suppose the, the ultimate question isn't it is this is that you're you're serving this sentence you come up for parole in 2027 do you remain somebody who has that dark side and may have moments if you came out of here where you're out of a controlled environment where you lost control again and did something heinous again. <laughs>